welcome to the It's All Good show. Luke is here for a chat. My name is Denise Belil, and I'm a serenity expert. I'm here today with Sean Berman, and we'll talk about her business and what she does and very interesting things that's going on in her life and for people around her. But before we start, I want to say why I talk I talk about It's All Good. First of all, it's my favorite cup. It's all good. I know it's backward, but nevertheless, it's all good. And because that's my way of thinking. Like I feel that in life, whatever happened to you, the best thing I can say for myself is it's all good. I can't go in the past. I can't change the past and I can't predict the future. So the best place to be is right here, right now. And right now, it's all good. So now let's bring, uh, oh, before we go, before we bring Sean over, I want to remind you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash at Denise Bilil. And also, if you want to be on this show or if you want to have a conversation with me, you can go to tiny.cc forward slash talk with Denise. And then we can um, have a conversation and then see where that leads us. So let's welcome Sean Berman. She's a master coach and I've known her for about a year now. And we've been in it really only a been lot. a year. Wow. Yeah, no more than that. I know. It's been like we've seen each other almost every day. So it seems like we're <laughs> we've been working together for years. We've had 10 years worth of therapy together, right? Once a week. Yeah, and when, <laughs> within a year. So a year. Sean, I'm so yeah. excited to have you on the show. Thank you for being here. Well, you know, I love being places where people are up to similar things as what I'm up to. And I love having people in my, like supporting the people in my tribe to get their word out and their message out to people. Mm -hmm. So it's perfect, really. It's a perfect uh, combination. Thank you. So tell me, master coach. I mean, you you, you have not always been a coach. I well, see, you know, I've actually seen your resume. So <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It, it, and it's interesting because when I first became a coach, there was no coaching around. Like there was, was no coaching. Thing. Yeah, it was not a thing then. Yeah. And the first kind of coaching I took on and got trained in was employment coaching. Mm. Um, and I had done, I had worked with uh, high level behavioral disordered kids for years and years and years. So I started as a camp counselor and then I went and did my degrees and I got trained in doing that. And eventually, um, eventually my doctor said, I'm not going to sign medical release forms for you to do this work anymore <laughs> because mm. it was really could be very physical work. Right. You know, and I had been working with, um, behavioral disordered uh, teens, boys, mm -hmm. who, you know, and so they were very physical. And the doctor just mm -hmm. said, no, no more of this. You need to get retrained. Yeah. And yeah. when what, when I went and did the, you know, the, our communities, we're really lucky in Canada because we have lots of programs that are designed to retrain you and look at your transferable skills. Yeah. And I remember sitting in this three-week program, right, designed to have you look at where your skills are transferable. I remember watching this, these people lead this program. I'm thinking, I could lead this program program okay. right yeah, in fact I could this program <laughs> and you right? like I was looking at what they were doing and what I would bring to it and I was getting excited about having the people in a program looking for work be excited about what was next for them mm -hmm. right rather than the program I was in where everybody was just like they were doing it because they were mandated to be there yeah, right? yeah, you know yeah. I was like I could do this so I walked up to the one of the facilitators at the end and I said what are the requirements you know, to lead these programs that you lead. And he told me, uh, right. And I had walked up to a different facilitator and they weren't as forthcoming, mm -hmm. right. Cause you always ask more than one because what the advice people give you is so different. Yeah. Right. So I'm always a high level, like let's go talk to three, at least three different people. Right. So anyway, so he told me what to do. I went and did it and literally was, was doing employment counseling, yeah. which I shifted into coaching co quite quickly. Um, literally within a year later, I had all of the requirements and all of the, you know, certifications yeah. and stuff that I needed. for that. But it was really great. And what was really great about it is I was working with people who had, you know, for decades been in the same industries, fishery workers, mm -hmm. forestry workers, mm -hmm. right? And those interest industries were had just been devastated. So there wasn't enough fish or work for the for those workers. So, you know, to assist them in finding a whole new pathway yeah. to passion, 
like really cool. And it's quite different. And I mean, when you come out of fishery, it's not like you come out of, yes. of being a secretary and then you can do something else. No, because you've only talked to fish for 40 years. Exactly. You're like completely useless with human beings. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Like when, what we noticed was is the greater success we had was when helping them start their own businesses again mm -hmm. versus having them go to work for other people because they made really crappy employees. Yeah. Right. Not because there was anything wrong with them, but because they were used to being on their own out on the boats, causing what they needed to cause already. Independent. So yeah. that was, so that's how I kind of get started nice. in coaching. Nice. And, you know, I realized that pure method coaching when I did enough training, that pure method coaching was amazing for causing results, but not as fast as I wanted it to be. Mm. So I started taking a look at other forms of education and other models of coaching that allowed us to move a little faster until I created kind of like the hybrid version that I use today, which is, you know, a 50% coach, 50% consultant, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah. that's super cool. The coaches are awesome, you know, but they're never going to tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. They're only ever going to ask you the proper questions that will allow you to find the proper path for yourself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. A pure method coach will never tell you what to do. Yeah. I'm not a pure method coach then because I often say, is, I that, know, okay most people you, are. is that okay if I give you an advice, you know? Yeah, exactly. Can I give you right? a suggestion, often, you know? Yeah, exactly. Can, can I offer you something here? Like, yeah. but again, that's asking questions first, right? Yeah, I don't yeah, even ask. Yeah. I'm like, I'm going to tell you these 10 things will cause it. Pick five. Let's go. Right. Like, <laughs> you know, so I'm even beyond, I'm more on the consulting realm than I am coaching realm, but I'm fully capable of coaching people out of whatever breakdown gets in the way. Mm -hmm. And there are three basic things that get in the way of people causing the results that they want, right? So I just want to give all of your listeners a piece of that. Absolutely. And then I'm going to give them resources where they can delve more into that, okay? Exciting. Yeah. Yeah, I know, right? People think there's a lot of reasons why they don't do things, but there is really only three. Okay. Okay. Number one. So we're just going to simplify life as much as possible. In fact, sometimes people say to me, Denise, I can't believe that worked because it was so simple. Yeah. Like yeah. there's certain things that we do and we train people to do where they just can't believe it works. Right. Because it's so simplistic, but listen, the most beautiful things that we put in our mouths are the simple things. Mm -hmm. The most beautiful experiences we have with other human beings are the simple ones. People are complicating you know? stuff way too much. We do that, right? All the time, right? But think of the most incredible experiences you've ever had. And I guarantee you, it was one simple thing about that experience mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. made it a beautiful experience yeah. for you. Yeah. So it's the simple things, okay? So the first thing, the very first thing to always ask yourself is, are you upset? Because mm -hmm. if you're not causing the results that you want, you might have an upset in the way. There just could be an upset there. What do I mean by upset? Yeah, how would I'm going to describe you the that one. because some people would think yeah. like, "Well, I'm not upset," meaning that I'm not. I'm going to give you the big one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So anger is the first one, mm -hmm. right? Like a lot of people, when they see you angry or you raise your voice, they assume you're upset. Mm -hmm. I think this is funny because not everybody who raises their voice is actually upset, but different displays. Anger itself is an upset. Yeah. It's emotionally juicy. So the first character of an upset is that it's emotionally juicy for you. Okay, that's the first character of it. Okay. The second character is like things like shame and blame. You know, when we're just feeling so much shame and blame that it's causing us emotional upset. Again, it has to be emotionally juicy or we can't call it an upset. Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. So shame, blame, anger. Another good one is guilt. Mm -hmm. You know, when people feel guilty about things, yeah. there's an upset there. It stops them from eating. It stops them from sleeping sometimes. Okay. So the second characteristic of something that's an emotionally, an emotional upset is that it stops you from sleeping or eating, right? Then you can say you really are emotionally upset. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's a few other ones, sadness in particular, when we lose people that mm -hmm. can definitely cause sadness can cause a level yeah. of upset. Okay. Or, um, so there's a few other ones involved, but those are the big ones, right? Shame, blame, guilt, anger, and sadness. Top five. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When your relationship breaks up, you're both angry and sad. Mm -hmm. Double the upset. Yeah, of course, of course. You definitely have upset we'll there. Guilty, we'll feel guilty or we're blaming others. Triple the upset. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So you add, you it's stack compounding. those emotions. Yeah. yeah, I was saying the same thing as you, right? Like you compound. That. You start so. stacking them on top of each other. Yeah. The upset gets greater and greater, yeah. okay? Yeah. So we teach people how to disappear upset every Thursday. Mm. So every Thursday, one of the members of my team comes online and teaches people the process and then sends it to them for free. We're committed to giving this process away 
to everybody in the world. Mm -hmm. I've done it with people as young as six years old. Okay. In fact, that's how it got developed was for a six year old. Wow. Okay. Anybody can do it. All right. But the reason why we give it away is because we know that if there was less upset in the world, we would be living in a different world. Of course. Of course. Okay. So we're going to put that information um, on somewhere on this call so that people can have access to that. You are invited. It's one of my free gifts for you to go to that training for free and get all of the, everything that you need to deal with upset. Now there's a pitfall. Uh -oh. Let me tell you what the pitfall is. The pitfall is, is once you learn how to disappear your upset, it actually becomes an integrity issue for you to stay upset. Say that again. Like, okay. Yeah, it's good. Right. It's good. <laughs> I know. Right? Say that again. <laughs> Once you learn how to disappear upset, mm -hmm. it becomes an integrity issue for you to stay upset. Mm. See, we have no say over getting upset. Okay. As human beings, we're going to get upset about it. In fact, we're up, we're walking upsets waiting to happen most of it. Yeah. So there's nothing you can do about that. You have no say in that, but you have everything to say upset because staying mm -hmm. upset is mm -hmm. completely optional. Yeah. Having an upset is sort of a so, signal that something's not right. Right. It's, a, it's just a reaction. Like, it's a, just automatic, right? It's part it's of your machinery. Of being yeah. Human. It's a signal. Yeah. Okay. It's what you do. So about what's going to happen right? is if you choose to stay upset, the impact of that unworkability is going to be bigger now that you know how to disappear your upset. Mm. Mm -hmm. So you have you no reason to stay that, that way, right? Yeah. Yeah. You have the no more you to stay upset, the more integrity you, know. you don't have, right? Like it's just an yeah. integrity yeah. issue yeah. now. Okay. Yeah. Because you know how to disappear your upset. And here's the pitfall number two, okay? The second pitfall is you're going to get annoyed with upset people around you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When people come to you upset, you have a choice to say, would you like to disappear? You're upset. Mm -hmm. And they, they say, yes, great. You do the exercise with them and you teach them how to disappear it. And then you mm -hmm. send them the material, right? If they say no, then you simply say, okay, no problem. Call me back when you're ready to disappear it. Click. Mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. because yeah you're because start, it's contagious right yeah and you're going to start getting annoyed and frustrated with people yeah. all they want to do is phone to you and complain about their upset rather than disappearing it yeah yeah so then the magic starts to happen because you start to be able to create what i call an upset free zone around you mm -hmm. see i don't let people stay around me upset unless they're paying me <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right and even then, I only give them five minutes to communicate all there is to yeah, communicate exactly. about that upset before we disappear it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And if they're not paying me, I'm so sorry. You get very limited amount of time from me to listen mm -hmm. to that crap. And my environments and my tribes have been trained in that. Mm -hmm. So people don't call me upset unless they're willing to disappear it and move on and move to the next level, whatever that looks like for them. Okay? Yeah. But chances yeah. are, if you're not getting the results you want, you may be upset about something. Okay? Mm -hmm. So then the next, the next cause of not getting the results that you want, for sure, for sure, is disempowerment. Mm. See, there's a difference between being upset and being disempowered. When you're upset and you take actions coming from a state of upset, those actions are 100% of the time detrimental. In other words, they move you backwards. Mm -hmm. How many times have we seen people be angry and then go and do stupid things like drive, right? When they're really upset. And right? then they wonder why they had that accident. It, it, like, seriously, cops are always like, this person never should have driven. This person never should have driven. <laughs> you know, but we do things like that. We go and take actions when we're in a state of upset and it never turns out well for us. Mm -hmm, ever. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you're not upset, you've done the reset process, you've dealt with your upset, but you're still not causing results. You still feel stuck. It could be that you're just disempowered, right? Which means you're not emotionally upset but you're also not empowered to take actions to cause the like the great things that you want. And, um, and if people reach out to me, I'll send them the information on our free introduction to the reclaim your power, where we teach you at the very least the first step of that so that you have, yeah. have a chance of getting empowered and getting back in action. So dis disempowered 
people can still take action being detrimental, but those actions don't move them forward quickly. They're almost sidestepping actions instead of forward stepping actions, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So the second yeah. thing to do yeah. when you take a look at is, am I actually disempowered? And the easiest way to tell if you're disempowered is to ask yourself if you're empowered. Because if you're not empowered, everything else is not that, right? It's like pregnant, not exactly, pregnant. Exactly, exactly. You, you you can, you can, yeah, you can be both. Yeah, if I say to you, Denise, are you empowered? And you sit there going, hmm, I'm not really sure. That's a no. <laughs> Right. Yeah, yeah. If it's not a you resounding yes, exactly. If it's not a resounding yes, it's an absolute no. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But how right? can how people well, recognize well, that they are in this disempowerment? Like uh, beside what you just said, right? Like how do they recognize their disempowerment? Well, I tell them to take a look at situations where they're really, really empowered. Like find it, find your happy place. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's your happy place? Like if I close my eyes, my happy place is almost always in the pool or in the ocean. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Right. When I'm in those two places, it's hard to stay disempowered about anything. Okay. But people picture yourself in your happy place. Picture. Now start to feel those feelings that you feel when you're in your happy place. You got them. Yeah. Okay. Good. Are you feeling like that right now in this situation? No. Okay. Then we're clear. You're not, you're not empowered then. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. Pe human beings only have moments of being empowered, really, unless they're really mm -hmm. highly trained. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Like I've, I've known some gurus yeah. that are pretty empowered most of the time, right? Yeah. I've known some, you know, I've known certain world leaders that are empowered most of the time, but they've got a lot more training than the everyday Joe of us, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. but, uh, saying that, saying that, I was, I remember it reminded me, I don't know whom I was listening to, one of the self help book, and he was saying, no one, even if we say at the end of the 24 hours, we'll give you $10 million for you to be happy throughout the whole day without having upset or without, you know, having a negative feeling, you will not be able to do that unless yeah, no one can win that game. Super yeah. train. Yeah. Unless you're super trained. And even that it's, it's not easy, you know, yeah. to control. Yeah. Our, very true. Our being very true. And that's why we, that's why we, re we created reclaim your power was just mm -hmm. to give people a step-by-step -step in what to do when that happens, mm -hmm. right? Because it happens at the most inconvenient times, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's oh, not yeah. like it's happening while you're sitting in bed and it's not going to impact anybody. No, it happens right before you're going to make go make an important speech or say I do or give a eulogy or have that breakup conversation that you don't want to have. Like, literally, it happens in the most inconvenient moments. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and that, that's why, so, you know, because you, yeah. you didn't work on it. So we teach people, we teach people what to do in those circumstances. And we start that by giving the first pieces of way just so that they've got a place to start. Okay. And we do that every Thursday. And again, if people reach out to me, I'll make sure that they get those, that information. Wonderful. Okay? And I think so if, then I, if I remember third. well, the number one and number two, they're one after the other on Thursday, right? They are to make it simple for people, right? <laughs> yeah, you they know, just show up so we do, uh, yeah. we do disappear upsets and train them in that from, 6 p.m. Eastern to 6.30. And then from 7 to 8, we do the introduction to reclaim your power. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Out of our commitment, really, that people just are able to navigate what life throws at them powerfully. Yeah. Right? Because we know life is not going to stop giving you opportunities to go to work on this anytime soon. It's mm -hmm. just not. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So if you look, right, you're not getting the results you want, but you've checked and you've done the, re the reset process, so you're not upset anymore. Good. Great. You've checked. And you're not disempowered anymore. You're actually taking actions that are empowered and you're moving forward. But you're still not causing exactly what you want. Like you've, you've been doing that for a week or two weeks and then you're like, you're still not causing what you want. Hmm, let's take a look. You're absolutely 100% incomplete about something. Okay. Okay. So the easiest way to check this out is to look at each of the four quadrant areas of life. Okay. What am I not been in communication about or what's not working that I'm not taking any action about that I need to get complete about? Mm-hmm. And literally there'll be something in one of those four quadrants where you've been procrastinating, causing what there is to cause or saying what there is to say or incomplete about something that somebody did or said where you're not complete about that. Okay. And mm -hmm. this Tom Graham is fabulous at doing this inside of my tribes. He's the coach I most refer to this because he can get people complete in like two or three sessions uh, from like massive completions from life. Right. But it's a process mm -hmm. to get complete. And you need to learn the process. And I know Tom does events where he teaches that. 
All right. So again, reach mm, out right. to me and I will connect you with the people who will teach you how to do this in a way that makes sense. And then you have the three things so that anytime you're stopped or stuck, you can go, okay, am I upset? Am I disempowered or am I incomplete? Mm -hmm. And you're like, bing, bang, boom. Now you're, you know, now you know what to do. Yeah. You kind of realign your, your domino, right? Like you got, you know, yeah. if you push a domino and it doesn't work, it's because you're not aligned properly. So you Very need good. to realign yourself. Right? Very good. Sometimes we, we just, we don't want to take it on because we're uncertain of the results of what will show up. Uncertainty stops human beings from doing stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or people are afraid of the result. You know, maybe that's going to work yeah. and what's going to happen if that works, right? Mm -hmm. Like they're, you know, like for relationships, sometimes you see people that meets the perfect, you know, one of their ideal lover and they they hang back because of, wow, that seems too good to be true, right? Like what's going to happen if, and then you're disempowered, right? Because if you were empowered, you would jump right in, right? You would be. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's and that's a good point. If you're not eagerly running towards something then it might not be the thing for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's like we ham and haw over the people because we don't want to be alone. So we accept and tolerate things, you know, inside of our partner that we may not have tolerated if we weren't lonely. Yeah. Okay. Gives you a good 10 years. And then all of a sudden, none of that stuff works anymore. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> right? Sometimes we have to learn the lesson the hard way. Right. But I mean, it doesn't matter whether your focus is your business or your focus is the health and well-being quadrant or your focus is your relationship quadrant. Wherever your focus is, if you're not causing the results that you want, one of those three things that I just talked about is at work mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. on you. So how did you uh, come about to to teach about all of that? Because this is this is pretty big in a sense, right? Like, so years of experience? Or yeah, I mean, I was or? lucky. Yeah, I was lucky because I was raised by entrepreneurs, right? Mm. And the people I had around me were very entrepreneurial-like, you know, because I was raised in a town where everybody kind of owned their own business and did their own thing. And people would barter all the time for services, right? So yeah. I learned how to talk to people about what products and services they had to offer when I was quite young. And I remember I wanted to, there was things I wanted and my dad wouldn't give me the money for them because my dad's favorite phrase is money doesn't grow on trees, you know? And I was like, yes, they do. There's called money trees. I've heard about this. You know, I've never seen one, but I've heard about it, you know? <laughs> and then my dad would be like, no, you want to, you're going to have to figure it out. You're going to have to figure out a way to make, make money. And I went and I asked um, a, a local friend of ours, you know, a friend of my dad's, you know, like my dad doesn't want to give me money. I need to make money. What do I do? And I think I was, I was like eight or nine years old when this happened. <laughs> and she said, well, here's what we'll do. She goes, I won't pay you in cash, but if you come and weep up around our restaurant every Saturday, you and your dad can come and eat free at our restaurant every Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay. So then I said, dad, how much will you pay me for our Tuesday night dinner? I'm going to supply two Tuesday night dinner. How much are you going to pay me for that? Okay. My dad says, well, I'm not going to pay you in cash, but I'd be willing to give you, you know, this many hours of my time as a, as a house painter to do that. So then I went to a fr another friend's parents and I said, you know, that dog house out in the back of your house. And he's like, yeah. And I said, it's a really well-built dog house. And he's like, yeah. And I said, but it doesn't match your house. How about if I find someone to paint it to match your house and you pay me 20 bucks. And he said, okay. So literally I went round and did. I did until I made 20 bucks. Well, that's amazing. I never heard of that. That's yeah, really cool. I, you know, and it's because I was living in a place where the barter system was so alive and real. Right. Yeah. But the That's point is, is that if you want, there are enough resources around you for any problem you have at yeah. 80, 20 planning, we say any problem you have can be solved with brainstorming. Mm -hmm. Which means you just need to ask enough people around you who are more creative than you to give you some good ideas. Yeah. yeah. Right. So then I started doing that. Then when I was 11, I opened my first um, major business, which was a babysitting uh, yeah. service. Right. Because in, in where we come from, you can't babysit until you turn 11. Right. Yeah. You have to be a certain age and you have to pass this course and blah, blah, blah. Right. So I started babysitting. And then when I got to be too popular, I started hiring other babysitters to work for me. And so I charged the client three dollars an hour and I paid the babysitters two dollars an hour. <laughs> so I made a dollar an hour for every hour that I got a babysitting job for someone. I was like, I like this because <laughs> now I don't even have to do the babysitting, but I still make money. This works for me. 
right? <laughs> I did that basically up until ran that business until I was about 16 or 17 and had started another business. And so I sold that one off to one of my uh, coworkers, one of the people that worked for me and moved on to doing other things. Yeah. So how many, how many babysitting gigs would you get by the time you were 15, 16? That must have been I had 22 bit. babysitters working for me by the time I was 15. <laughs> Yeah, and so they you were the go-to. You were the go-to girls to get babysitters. Well, and they knew to they knew to trust my sitters because I quizzed my sitters, and no one was allowed, allowed to be a jerk on my watch, right? And if they weren't the right sitters, they didn't work for me. Yeah, yeah. Right? They weren't the kind of sitters who over and spent the whole night on the couch instead of playing with the kids. No. Yeah. Yeah, you don't didn't. want to do that. No. And yeah, I remember yeah. once, you know, once on um uh on the Saturday, like December 30th, December 30th, that people would go have these big parties. And I once did a thing at the movie theater where every parent paid me five bucks plus the entrance fee for their kid, plus popcorn and drinks for their kid. Okay. And I once took 20 kids to the movies. I made more that day than <laughs> most of the parents made in money that day. Right. But it's yeah, again, yeah, yeah. all in your willingness to to be creative and to do stuff even if you're afraid. 13-year-old Sean yeah. was afraid. 15-year-old Sean was like, oh my God, I got 20 people relying on me for regular work weekend. What are we going to do? I don't have enough clients. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, I was worrying about stuff that most people weren't worrying about at 14 years old. <laughs> for sure. And actually, and I, had to to sell, events I had to create to get the babysitting business because I left the country. Hmm. I moved to Hawaii when I was 14, 15 years old, 15, I guess I was 15. I moved to Hawaii to live with my mom and my stepfather there for a couple of years and go to school there for a couple of years. So I literally had to hand the business off. <laughs> I had can, to go. Yeah. You can take care of it. Yeah. Yeah. But it was great. But in order to create, what I was going to say is in order to create more uh, babysitting business, you're, you're, you work with people to organize event for the parents to go to. Exactly. <laughs> oh yeah. I had, all kinds of plans. I had all kinds of plans, but you know, it really did. You know, I, I had enough money to get what I wanted, what I needed, do what I wanted, what I needed, register for school, for college. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I pretty, I paid my own way all through college and university with that money, you know, so, so it, it, it our kids can produce amazing things if we let them. Yeah. yeah. Right. That makes it's not difference. like we have, you know, we need a finger on it because, you know, we don't want them creating their only fans account when they're 15 or something like that. Right. So mm -hmm. we need to keep an eye on them, you know, but for the most part, our kids are really creative and we should, we should, we should really assist them in prospering and assisting them in prospering is not, Oh, it's tiger. Hi tiger. We're good fans of tiger. Everybody yeah, hi tiger. tiger. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we really should assist them in not thinking that college is the only place I could have done just as well without ever having to go to college university. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to be the first person in my family to go. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I went. Yeah. But I didn't learn anything in college and university that I currently apply to my businesses. I'm telling you right now. I didn't. I believe that. But, I yeah. learn, but what I did learn was how to talk to people even better. Mm -hmm. and how to be professional in my conversations yeah. with people, which I learned through college and university, through yeah. dealing with all those people, right? Yeah. So, I mean, Seth Godon has it right when he said, our kids don't need the same education today that we had or that our grandparents had. Mm -hmm. You know, our education system was not set up to foster a child development. It was set up to train and develop factory workers to read and write and do the job. Yeah. It was set up to train sheep. Mm -hmm. It wasn't set mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. to, to teach kids how to flourish in the world. Yeah. You know? It's totally different yeah. now. That's why these cool like Montessori and things like that are very popular now. Yeah, Montessori, very popular. Yeah. Discovery is a big one down in the States. Mm -hmm. the, the United States has several different, what we call alternative education yeah. schools. Yeah. And if I had children today, I wouldn't be sending them to school. I'd be homeschooling. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. no way I would be sending them to school to spend six hours a day learning one hour of material, right? Only 50% of which is going to be useful to them in the future. Yeah. yeah <laughs> They're just true. not going to do true. that. Right? For example, in the United States, when I went to school in the United States, they don't teach them about world history as much as we do in Canada. Like their school system is really centered around the United States as the center of the universe, right? Which mm -hmm. I found really interesting. Mm -hmm. And I used to get teased because I didn't know the 13 colonies, 
right? Because I wasn't American, right? So it took me a while to learn the kind of stuff that you need to learn, right? Whereas I learned a lot about other cultures when I was in school in Canada. You know, yeah. every year we learned about different areas of the world and, you know, mm -hmm. what those areas of the world unique and special to those areas of the world. So yeah. I just think there's a lot of learning that's useful and there's a lot of learning that's not useful. And, you know, it's a parent's job to figure it out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um, and not all kids are for school. Let's just put it that way. They're not all meant yeah. for that. Absolutely. So tell me, Sean. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. I want to tell you, you know how your kid's not meant, you know your kid's not meant for school? Because they get into trouble because they're so freaking bored with what they're doing in class. Like, I remember I used to get sent to the office for no reason other than the teacher could see me starting to get annoying to the other students. And so she would send me on these, like, they would send me on these treasure hunts around the school because I was done the work and I would start bugging the kids around me because I was bored. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So when kids are bored, let's give them other things to do and create, you know, because I don't, if I get really bored, it's bad. I'll just take people out so I can put them back together again. <laughs> <laughs> Emotionally, right? You don't want Sean Behrman bored. Trust me, people. It's a bad idea. <laughs> so, so I know you're not bored because you have a lot of project coming up in the yeah, next, uh, the next five, up. six months. So what's happening? Tell, tell us about the event that are coming up. Well, you know, I'm a huge believer in the bigger your net work is, the bigger your net worth is. Okay. Okay. And if you've never read the book by Porter Gale, it's a great book called Your Net Work is Your Net Worth. Okay. Porter Gale okay. wrote the book. Great book. Okay. So I'm a huge believer in that, which means I create programs and events that are actually designed to build our network even bigger. So the mm -hmm. first event we created was something called the Mastery of Networking 1000. So in September, we have our next Mastery of Networking 1000 uh, event. And last time it was just so much fun. First of all, we had a lot of <laughs> breakdowns, which was also fun because we everybody got to see what does it look like when there's breakdowns, how to be with that, you know? Yeah. But um, but we had many people like telling us how great it was. You get to meet over 70 people yourself. And then in addition to that, you get another hundred to follow up with after the event. So literally you get someone to follow up with for the next six months, every day, one person, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Huge, right. By the way, you all know the money's in the follow up, right? It's not yeah. something new. It's not a new concept, right? So the mastery of networking will be on September 16th. We're now, I think all of our room hosts are full, okay? However, if you want to be a room host, let me know. There's some extra special perks for that. Um, but we will get the information out to all of everybody. And I know Denise will send it out to her entire tribe because we're committed that anybody who owns a business knows how to network and knows how to network well because yeah. your network is your net worth. So that's one event that we have going. Yeah. yeah. Uh, secondary event that we're about to start in another week is called I Support Your Business. Mm -hmm. It's a free campaign for 101 businesses for 101 days. Really exciting. I think there's two spots left, maybe. So yeah, yes, there's not. You might like seven. So I think they got yeah. working at it yesterday. I think so. Yeah, and you can go on the wait list for that because if somebody doesn't give us the material that we need to support, like to to do their campaign, then we go to people on the wait list to put in a replacement, you know? Yeah. But what this means is you get a day and all 100 businesses go to one place and forward, like, share, and comment on your stuff to their social media. Mm -hmm. In other words, it goes out everywhere. The things that about your products, about your services go out everywhere. So if you want to get involved in that, by all means, make sure you get, reach out to me. Lots of things to DM me about today, yeah. uh, but reach out to me and I'll make sure that you get the proper information for that because it's a, it's a really a great opportunity. At the very least, you're going to have a hundred other businesses know who you are mm -hmm. and what you're about and why you're about that. Yeah. I like to call it like, it's your birthday, you know, in a sense, like yes. it's like people celebrate you, celebrate your, your business, uh, support you, elevate you. And yeah, then, it's like your business birthday, isn't it? Yeah. It's and, quite an amazing And then in, in return, yeah. you do the same for all businesses, 400 day for five minutes a day, right? Five minutes a day, it'll take you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's incredible. I think it's a great experience and opportunity for people yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Then First a, time in North America that we're doing it. So it's a pretty big deal. Then we have a third event. We have a third event, which is specifically either our coaches and would like to coach the event or for people who would really like to try coaching for the first time or they can't afford regular coaching. 
Okay. Because participants are going to be able to purchase a ticket for like $39.95 or something. And that ticket is going to give them three different coaching sessions with different coaches, 20 minute, powerful powerhouse speed coaching events, right? With three different coaches so that they can compare what coaching styles are like. We'll even teach you how to come up with the 10 questions you should ask the coaches, right? But they get to choose from three coaches from three different walks of life, three different specialties, right? So it really is an opportunity for people to get some ACE coaching from people for like $40 mm -hmm. for like several different um, participants. And some people are going to buy two sets of tickets so that they can have six coaching sessions course, during this period. Smart, smart. Smart. Fastest, easiest, and most inexpensive way to get coaching, right? In the on the market today, it's called the Coaches Continuum, a speed coaching event. And if you're a coach, we have about eight more spots for coaches to participate yeah, in that. Yeah, it's about that. Yeah, yeah. And contact me for that because I'm recruiting coaches. So yes, Denise is the person to talk to. If you're a coach, Denise is the person to talk to. She'll let you know yeah. exactly what you need to do to get yourself in on that one. Wonderful. So, so, so we mentioned it. We mentioned it a few times, how to reach you. So let's show people how to reach you so they can text you, right? Yes, they should text me their email address, okay, to that number. All right, text their email address, and then I'll make sure, you know, text me whatever they were interested in because I talked about a lot of different things. Yeah. And then yeah. I'll yeah. make sure that they get the information that they need, the right registration links, the free registration links, the free material that I promised. We'll make sure everybody gets yeah. that. Wonderful. Wonderful. So. so Write that down. And then Write that number we, down. Talked about, we talked about there's a spring year upset. So that's one of the gifts that you give. So when they reach you and they text you, here's my email address. I want to have the how to disappear. Upset if they're really smart, minutes. they'll say, send me everything. Send me all those stuff <laughs> that you talked about. Absolutely. If they're really and the second one, something we didn't talk about. Let's talk about the coach's corner. Yeah, let's talk about the coach's corner. So I do the coach's corner every Friday for free. And I lean right into our Facebook group and you literally can come on the screen live and listen to the, to the whole thing. Okay. So we do the first 30 minutes live into the Facebook group for free for everybody. Okay. Then the last 30 minutes is for our VIP clients. They pay $47 a month and get coaching with me in a very small group setting. Okay. So that they can ask whatever questions they want for 30 minutes. It's the most inexpensive way to get access to me, but you don't need to be that. You can just join the Facebook group and you can literally get live streamed in there. We have guides in there. So all of the training we've done up until now for free, all the coaches, you know, questions that have been answered are in the guides in the group. So just click on that link and we'll get you there for free. Wonderful. I think it's all about, you know, taking action, making yeah. the step necessary to get the help you need. Because too often people say, oh, I'm suffering, I'm suffering, I'm suffering. But then they just sit back and say, I'm suffering, and they don't do anything. We gave yeah. you lots well, of tools what I said. today. If somebody phones you in an upset, right, are you willing to dissent? No? Okay, great. Yeah. Call me back when you are. Click. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we have the tool for you when you're ready to, to move forward and to uh, we do. We to do. And listen, you can get all, have, most of these things are free anyway. Because mm -hmm. I and Denise come from the tribe of coaches that believe in giving our best stuff away for free. Because we know you'll mm -hmm. keep coming back for more. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I need one last tip before we go. Well, I think that I, the only last thing I'm going to say is that saying you don't have the money for coaching is no longer a valid excuse for not getting the support you need to move forward. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because you can get coaching for free free every day in our Facebook group. So it's just no yeah. longer a valid excuse. So if you keep using that one as an excuse, sorry, we just killed off that one. So then you go here, you go at to the uh, Facebook, I need coaching. Here we go. Yep. Facebook.com slash groups slash I need coaching ask to join the group. And, uh, and you can we'll get, get you the in coaching there. there. All right. Thank you so much, Sean. I'm so happy that we had that conversation. I learned so much about you that I didn't know. And I think that's awesome. You know, had a great time. Awesome. It's been great. Thanks, Denise. You're, Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Stay there. I'll be right back with you. Well, I hope you get a lot of gems out of that conversation. And there's so much tool that Sean has for you. So I hope you reach out to her and that you're going to request those tools because you, you're just going to grow from that. You're going to learn so much. So again, I'm just going to Remember to join my YouTube channel so that you are being 
call down like you have a bell click the little bell and then every time there's a new video coming up you'll know that there's a new guest coming up and there's amazing interview for you and if you want to have a talk with me well book a call with me and i'll be happy to support you help you see how i can be of service for you so thank you so much for being here until next time be kind to one another and i'll see you next monday goodbye